we cannot deny the invaluable support or contribution that the education system is meant to be to the development of leaders. And um, yet, on a daily basis, uh, the, the education system seems to fail the majority of those who go through it. And I, I, and I talk about fail in a number of ways, because fail, in a sense, as long as we continue to set the bar as low as 30% per subject at matric level as a pass, um, as long as we continue with the majority of those who enter the education system at, 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 high school, at, at primary school level don't make it out the other end, we have a serious challenge in as far as, I mean, yes, yes, there's a debate whether the leaders are born or made. I don't want to enter into that debate, but I think there's a higher chance of understanding that in the kind of platforms that we're, lo we're looking at, the, the desire to have CAs, the desire to have engineers, the desire to have all these professional beings, really is dependent on how we structure the education system, that in fact, in, in the actual sense, we narrow uh, the, the leadership pool by, by, by failing in the space. I was speaking with a lady who heads up uh, an association of schools, so she's you know, kind of engaged with it at the coal face. She's, I think she has a lot of your sentiments set, you know, you know, saying, you know, are, are we setting our kids up to fail long term by setting the bar so low? Uh, that was one part of the conversation. Uh, the part that really she got passionate about, and I share that passion, uh, I think is the mindset around that. You know, what are we actually trying to do through our education system? You know, are we just educating our kids so that they can pass, so that they can achieve uh, a pass rate and go into a tertiary institution? Or should we be st starting to think differently about that? Um, and, you know, and, that's, and that's where she really got passion. She said, man, wouldn't it be great if, if parents and, and a whole lot of other community stakeholders could get involved so that it doesn't become this thing of that's what I'm aiming for. I'm just aiming for that tertiary education pass. I go, what do I do with it? Um, I'm sitting with a friend right now who, uh, he lives in Durban, has a daughter who has just completed her BA honours, um, can't find a job. She's not employable. There's, there's one side of it. So, so here's a woman who's kind of listened to the whole thing, did well at school, got a decent pass set, um, you know, did really well, <laughs> went into tertiary education, completed a degree, then went the extra year, got the honours degree, but yet for some reason cannot become employable. And what I'm trying to advocate is that I think we need to start looking at systems and programs and projects that don't just educate our children, but also prepare our children to become employable. If you look internationally, every single country in the world that measures youth unemployment right now is reporting youth unemployment at its highest level ever. Mm. Spain, there are 56% of 18 to 28 year olds unemployed. That's worse than South Africans. So we, we often, as South Africans, we think this is our problem. Mm. And, and, and it's only one, you know, it's only the schooling system that's a problem. I agree with everything you've said, but even if we fixed the schooling system, and when we say the broken schooling system, we're talking the public schooling system. Mm. Our private schools are as good as or better than the rest of the world. And, and there's a huge divide here. So I'm not saying there's no issue there, but even if we fix that, there are still not enough jobs. Mm for our young people. And I, I don't think it's just the brokenness of the education system. It's the whole education philosophy exactly. that hasn't changed, and that's global. That's not a South African only problem. It's that we are training young people to live and succeed in a world that no longer exists. It's a world where if, if you get, you, you, you promise that if you work hard at school, get a good metric, you go to university, you qualify, you will get a job. You won't. Um, not here, not in Spain, not in New York, not in London, not in Moscow. And so we've got to be changing the mindset of, of us as older people to look at what it is we want from our, for and from our children. And we've got to train younger people to be a lot more, it's not just entrepreneurial, mm. but to not just expect that the system will provide. Yeah. That's what my grandfather was told, the system will provide. <laughs> Generation Y, Generation X know the system is broken. Mm. And they don't necessarily have the solution, but they certainly know the system is broken. Um, and so for me, yes, let's fix the education system in South Africa. I'm not saying don't yeah. do that. But let's do more than fix it. Let's upgrade it as well and update it for the 21st century. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. No, I mean, just as a follow-on, uh, you know, are we training... Um, uh, youngsters just to be road learners and to regurgitate, which is why I'm, I'm in agreement with that point, because I think 
we are, we are, we, the world requires leaders who are not just going to I imitate, but are going to innovate, mm -hmm. which, which requires critical thinking and, and, and analysis and thinking out of the box, which our current system, as it stands, yeah. that's level, does not encourage. And part of the problem is that if the current schooling system was designed actually as a system by very clever people about 150 years ago, when we were moving from the farming era to the manufacturing era. And what we had to do was make sure that we um, enculturated young people into a manufacturing world. So we, we built schools that looked like the factories of the day. We broke people up into the same size teams they would be working at in a factory. We put them behind wooden desks. We put them in rows. Uh, like this, we, we told them to be quiet for 30 minutes, we'll ring a bell, and then you change shifts. And no but, but, no, but I'm serious, I'm not just making this up. The whole system was designed by an entirely clever structure and said, it isn't about the content that you learn, mm. although the content obviously is there. It's the entire enculturation of the experience. We start at the same time a factory starts, we finish at the same time a ring, bells to move you through and we, we tell you that if you want to say something you have to put your hand up and there's one supervisor per classroom. We call them teachers but mm. they... Um, and what we need to do now is we need to step back and this is where I'm very interested in the, the research that carries on because that's where I think it should start. It should start with saying what type of people do we need in the world? <coughs> then what type of skills and processes and systems do they need? You'll discover part of the answer to that is you're actually going to learn a lot more as a child from computer games than you are from school about how the real world really mm. works, about collaboration, sitting in front of a screen for long periods of time, um, about being able to, to, to process those sorts of things. And so kids who play computer games actually end up being a lot better in the world of work than kids who do well at school, which is a, the, the scariest thing I've heard in the last 12 years. Yeah. We need to also work with the talent that is available to us. Um, we do have a lot of talent in South Africa. And one of the biggest comments that we get when, when assisting organizations with graduate recruitment programs and bursary programs is, um, but my child or, or this person's matric certificate said they got an A for, ma uh, a for maths. And then they do the assessments and they didn't do so well on the assessments. Mm -hmm. And the assessments are assessing, do, does the person show the behaviours required in the work environment? And it's not always your A students. So I completely agree. A certain level of education is required, and it's def the education system is definitely a concern in South Africa. But it is not the be-all and end-all. There is a lot of talent, and we need to recognise that talent and tap into that talent. And the talent doesn't necessarily mean a person got straight A's at university or at school. Um, a C student, an average student, could be your next leader of your organisation. Um, and I think, yeah, just to understand that and to realise that, that talent's not purely about getting the best marks at, at university and school.